someone asked me whether it was possible to make a lot of money authentically. They specifically said, can, can we make $500,000 a year, a million dollars a year in an authentic way? Well, I feel like the number doesn't really matter because a lot of money uh, it depends on you know what the person's needs are, their family, etc. I mean, to some people, in, they might need to make ten million dollars a year to to make a lots of money. To some people, making a hundred thousand dollars a year is a lot of money. So, um, the numbers don't really matter. You can make a billion dollars a year. You can make you know fifty thousand dollars a year. Whatever it is, can you make a lot of money authentically? Uh, I before I share my thoughts on this, I would love to know what your response or, or your intuition about this is. Um, go ahead and you know add a comment below if you'd like. You could pause the video uh, before you get biased by my thoughts. Uh, I'd love to know yours. So uh, I'm gonna make another video at some point about uh, why we want to make a lot of money. I think, I think that question um, is also important but that's a whole separate video to talk about. Um, I think we've been we've been influenced a lot by by our friends, colleagues, maybe who are following some success gurus, etc. So they, they there's a certain number. I don't know what. Why is it six, seven figures? Why can't it be twelve figures? I don't know. I mean, what you know? And if you live in Mexico, you know, you you only need fifty thousand a year to to do very very well. I mean, you know. So it's like anyway. That's a that's a separate video. Um, but I have I have some strong opinions on that that might be helpful to to think through. But in this video, let me just talk about how do we make a lot of money authentically. So the first the first um, factor is um, are you focused on their value or are you focused on your profit? Um, because you can make a lot of money either way except only one of them is authentic. So when you're focused on your own profit and your own income, then like if I'm focused on my profit and income, then you are a means to an end. Do you see what I mean? So this is why I'm so opposed to business trainings that focus on profit, profit, profit. Make lots of money because when the focus is on making money, and what is making money? Making money is taking money. You have to, let's have to, we have to, we have to be clear on this. To make money means you are taking money from other people. Other human beings are giving you, where else is the money coming from? Money comes from either the banks, that's, they, they start, they start the process. And then once the money goes in, you know, you know, created as a debt from the banks, then goes into people's hands. And then people spend money, peoples and companies spend money with each other. And when we make money, we are taking money from somebody else or some, some company, could be. But company is a collection of people. And there's a decision maker that, that you know, can get hurt if they spend money in the wrong way. So either way, we are taking money from people. And we could take money from people in a way where they feel tremendously grateful that the money we took from them, we gave them way more value back than, you know, or, or, or at least expect at least met the expectations of value uh, compared to the money we took from them. Agree? Does that make sense? So when we focus on making money, it, we're focusing only on one part of the equation. We're focusing on, let's take more money from people. Profit. Profit means taking money from people and spending less money out. That's what profit is. You take money from people and you give less money to other people. But how, how does profit create it? Otherwise, that's, that's it. You take money from one person and you spend less money with another person. You, you let people take less money from you and what you end up with is profit. So please stop buying business trainings that say profit, money, making money, revenue, because they're just, they're so uberly focused on one side of the equation that is not authentic because it's all about selfishness and, and, and taking from others, right? But I mean, every single spiritual tradition has taught us that selfishness is dangerous, okay? I'm not talking about self-care. Self-care is important. That's, that's self-love, self-care. That's just not beating yourself up and not letting other people beat you up, okay? That's, that's very important. But I'm talking about 
okay, I'm on business. I'm taking money from other people. That's what I'm focused on. Okay, the language matters. If you're focused on money and profit all the time, you're, you're training yourself to only think about one side of the equation. So when we focus authentically, spiritually, on the other side of the equation, okay, now it's got to be balanced in some way. But, but you know, if we, if we focus our heart on the other side of the equation, which is giving, which is giving value to other people, okay, if you give value in your business model to other people, effectively and efficiently, you will make lots of money, right? Because people will say, my God, I have not been able to find another service, another product that has given me as much delight, uh, results, um, helped me as much as yours. For the, money, the, the, for the amount of money that you took from me, I would have given you more money. That is the focus that we should be having in order to make lots of money. Because if we keep giving people these experiences. I would have paid you more. I would have paid you more. That's what our customers keep saying to us because it's so great whatever we gave them. They're going to tell other people. And this is how things scale authentically. You can scale things. And this is my, okay, this is on my second point now is you can scale things. So, so to be able to make a million dollars a year means that you need to sell a lot. Okay. You need to sell a lot of things, right? One example, let's say you have a $100 online course. You sell 1,000 online courses a month. Every month, you make 1,000 sales in your, 1, in your $100 online course, which is not that, I mean, it's a lot for most of us, including myself, but it's not, it's not like, it's not impossible. It's definitely doable. You sell 1,000 $100 online courses a month, and you've made a million dollars a year, ongoingly, 1.2 million, in fact, a year. Right. So and then, you know, you pay your team and you pay your ad advertising costs and you end up with high, high six figures, eight hundred thousand dollars a year take home pay. You pay taxes. You still end up with five hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. So, I mean, you to, to, to make a lot of money means you need to sell a lot of things and to sell a lot of things can happen in one of two ways. Most of the marketing you're going to learn from other people. OK. It's going to be push marketing. It's going to be, yeah, we're going to sell a lot because we're going to push a lot. We're going to use scarcity. We're going to use hype. Generally, those are the two tactics, scarcity, hype, and pressure selling. You know, we're going to use those three things to, and maybe some deception. Well, yeah, we're going, to, we're going to talk about these wonderful testimonials. Out of a thousand people who buy our courses, we're going to talk about the three people who got the most out of it. And people, most people are going to think that they're going to get that results too. So they use hype, they use decep deception, they use scarcity, they use pressure, and they use things that don't feel good to the heart to push something. And they push, 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 and they can make a lot of money that way. That's how you make a lot of sales. You push, 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 push everybody, make everybody feel pressure. And then, okay. So that's one way of making a lot of money is by pushing. The other way is by pull. Pull. Pull means the market themselves are demanding from you. Please give us more because this stuff is so good. I want to tell my all my friends about this product, and you you have probably experienced this too. You know, have you had a product or a service that you might? This is so good. I got to tell my friends about it. You know, this product. You, everyone's got to buy this thing. This thing is so good, right? That's pull marketing. That that means you have understood your market so well. That you have created something that is completely delighted, delighting them and that's solving their problem or that's meeting their needs or it's helping them reach their dreams or it's uh, fulfilling their passion or whatever it is you're doing, that they just naturally want to tell the whole world about you. Okay? One example is, you know, Focusmate, right? I, I, tell, I talk about Focusmate all the time. I am such an evangelist for Focusmate even before I became an investor. Now I'm a small investor. Just a... <laughs> I didn't invest that much, like a thousand bucks, but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, a small investor. But, uh, but I love that product so much. I, I talk about it everywhere, even before I was financially involved. It's because it, it gave me so much value. You know, I was even paying, even before they started monetizing, I was paying them because I'm like, yes, I, I want to be one of the don't, don't donors to focus me because I believed in it so much. So it's like, do you have a product like that that you just, you love telling people about? Well, that is how they make a lot of money. 
is by creating something that they really understand the market and so they get a lot of evangelists okay so you can you, you have a decision you can learn push marketing and and sell your soul essentially and feel badly in your heart and push away the feeling of badness in your heart to say no nah, it's this is necessary because i'm going to donate 75 percent of my money to charity so so i'm going to i'm going to donate a lot of my money to charity so i'm going to suck it up and do the aggressive and un inauthentic marketing because I have charity in mind. Oh, hold on a second here. The means never justify the ends. This is important for ethical living. The means can never justify the ends. Oh, I'm going to do evil here so I can do good here later. Is by its very nature the core of the core of evil, really, the core of inauthenticity is do something that is not true for me, that uh, spread falsehood so that I can spread truth later. Do evil so I can do good later. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. Life, life says, no, no, no. You do good no matter what, even if you don't get results. That's the, I think that's the core of personal growth, right? You do good. You be good. You do good. You, do, you, you speak the truth, okay? You, you speak the truth, you act with your values, no matter if you get good at it later. Doesn't matter, you still do good because you might not be rewarded in this life, but you will be rewarded in the next one, right? That's what all spirituality tells us. But thankfully these days, especially with social media and, and authentic marketing, you, you are often rewarded you know, with, with loyalty and with, with you know, uh, gratitude from your customers and your audience, but we're supposed to do good anyway. So, so in this case, it means to focus on pull marketing rather than push marketing. So that's how you can make a lot of money authentically. Okay. So focus on value for them rather than profit to yourself. Focus on pull marketing rather than push marketing. And the third one is as you scale up, are you able to scale up your care? A lot of businesses can't or aren't willing to because they're so busy growing that they're like, ah, we don't really care that fewer and fewer people feel cared about, but we're making more money, we're reaching more people, you know. Okay, so so the 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 thought, the thought, the thinking about this is imagine you only had one client. You only have one client who pays your bills. How are you gonna treat that client? You're gonna treat that client like royalty. You're gonna you're gonna Make sure their needs are met. You're going to make sure you're a good listener. You're going to make sure um, you are creating products and services that really serve them. Okay. Make sure your customer service is prompt and, and delightful. And okay. Now you have a hundred clients. You've scaled up your business. You have a hundred clients now. Do you, have you been able to scale up your, your level of caring? Now with a hundred clients, you're probably not going to be the only one in business. You're going to have a team. And have you been able to successfully train your team to care in the way that makes your customers and clients feel cared for? Because so many businesses, we've all experienced this. We used to you know, frequent this business that's a mom and pop store, and then they grew and grew and grew, and they become a corporate entity. And now they're like, oh, yeah, I just don't feel like I'm a member of the community anymore. I don't feel cared for. They're just really robotic when they talk to me, and they're just, they, don't, they just don't care anymore. Okay? So care as you scale is not easy, right? But you, that's how you do it authentically. That's how you make a lot of money authentically is to learn, to practice how to, as you scale, you have to bring on team members. And, and usually if you do the way that the kind of authentic marketing that I've I'm I'm been teaching you all, then your team members probably come from your own fans, your own fan base, your own hardcore fans who become clients and customers. Well, they might, you might recruit them to become team members because they believe it. They're so on board with your mission and they've seen how you treat people along the way. And, and they, have, they have really uh, started to emulate that even before they started working with you, you see. And so that's how you scale, uh, scale not only your money and your sales, but your caring. Because otherwise it's no longer authentic. It's now become a money machine that is that you're going to regret in the next life, right? Or, or sometime later in your life, you'll regret it. So the final and fourth idea here about making lots of money authentically is 
now versus the future. When you are focused on making a million dollars a year, where is that coming from? It's coming from your mind. It's not coming from your heart. What does your heart tell you? I mean, I don't know what your heart tells you, but typically when we get into the heart, our heart says, love the one that's in front of you. That's what the heart says, I think, right? Don't, the heart doesn't say, oh, think about all the charities you can support in five years when you're making a million dollars a year. That's still the mind. That's, to me, that's the ego. Ego says, I get to control where money goes. I get to control which charities will benefit. And I get to be the one to be the big donor of that charity. And I, I get so much praise. And I, I, I get to expand my vision for what a better world looks. That's all mind stuff, right? The heart says, who's in front of me now? And how can I care for her? How can I care for him? And how can I care for my, my own well-being and my own, my own sense of purpose and my own sense of um, joy right now, today? So now versus the future is an important question. How much are you focused on the future versus how much are you, are you present now in this moment? Whatever you're doing, the, 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 the danger of building a business with future and money in mind is that everything becomes a means to an end. As, as, as I've already said, means to an end is the core idea of evil. It's the core idea of falsehood, right? It's the core idea of selfishness. It's like, I, my vision should trump everybody else's vision. And so I will do whatever means necessary to get to my vision. That's called a bull in the China shop. That's called aggressiveness, right? And the heart doesn't say that. The heart says, the heart's soft and says, how can I love and how can I care now, right here, the person in front of me? And so, and how can I care? How can I, the heart also says, how can I bring joy into the very thing I'm doing now? Not thinking, oh, I'm just, I, I have to do this. I have to get this done so that I can have benefits later, right? Again, I always bring back that phrase from the Bhagavad Gita. You have no right to the fruit of your labor. That's what the Bhagavad Gita teaches us. You have no right to the fruit of your labor. You only have right to the labor itself. That's what you have a right to. And you have to let God take care of the fruits. God may or may not give you fruits based on your labor. It may or may not be your destiny to get fruits based on whatever you're doing right now. But you are called to do the thing you're doing right now with love and with mindfulness and with presence and with courage, and with grace, and with joy, and with you know, humility, and with um, creativity. That's what we're called, is the now we're called to, we're called now. We're not called in the future to be able to donate 99% of our profits to charity because we're making a billion dollars a year. <laughs> we're called now, the bookkeeping you have to do right now, the taxes you have to do right now, the email you have to send right now, the, the tasks you have to organize right now, the to-do list, the blog post you have to write right now, the email you have to send to the client, the proposal you have to send to the client. Whatever you're doing right now is you're being called to be the most loving person, most creative, courageous, gracious person you can be right now. Let God take care of the results. But of course, God, we could say is life, which is, we could say is cause and effect right? Let cause and effect take care of the results. If you're loving, gracious, creative, courageous now and, and now and now and now and now and now, of course your results are going to be great, naturally, right? So, but again, if you're focused on the future, oh, I got to get this client so I can make the money, then the client becomes a means to an end. And I just have to get this client and uh, make sure she's okay, make sure she's not unhappy. And it's just so meaningless. It becomes just chasing the future rather than joyfully savoring what is given to us to do right now. That's how we make a lot of money authentically. We don't worry about the money. And again, I'll bring in Jesus. Seek not the money. Seek not the million dollars a year, $500,000 a year. Seek not that. Seek the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, which means basically seek your highest values and the implementation of those values right now. Seek that. 
and let God take care of the rest, right? And Jesus says, seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all, everything else will be given to you. Well, let's put it in the atheist terms. Be a creative, courageous person today and your effects tend to be good ones. You tend to get everything else that you, you need as well because you are a good citizen of society. You are a good uh, caretaker of your audience. You are a good friend. You are a good um, uh, provider to your clients. You are a good partner to your business partners. You are a good boss to your team members. Well, then everyone wants to take care of you, right? So now versus the future, let's focus on the present now because, and the thing is, who knows? We might get a stroke tomorrow and die. You don't have guarantees of the future. So like, oh, I never got to those, I, I, on your deathbed, oh, I never made a million dollars a year so I can donate 90% to charity. But yeah, but along the way, did you live life with joy and love and all, all that good stuff? That's, that, that was your life. This is your life right now. So yes, you can make lots of money authentically. But if you start focusing on that, it becomes inauthentic. The more you are in the now, the more authentic things are. The more you're planning and acting for the future, the more inauthentic the current beingness is. Right. So I hope this is helpful. And uh, thanks to those who are commenting here. Um, let's see, Alejandra says, uh, yeah, I got so sick of the scarcity approach, which is utterly manipulative. We are on a different wave and can put together the real, create the reality of true abundance and being the ones who change the business as usual approach. Yes. Uh, Noel says, you know, I don't see those people staying around long term, the people who keep on manipulating and yeah, you can't sustain it. Well, I should say those of us who have a strong sense of values and conscience and heart can't sustain it. It's true. But there are people who can, who are somehow just very disconnected from, I, I, I don't want to judge them. I mean, that may be their path. Who knows? But yeah, I've seen some people sustain it for years and years. So, um, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Alejandro says, yeah, you know, we, we, we get this marketing from people who are trying to market to heart-based people like us. Oh, you can give to charity. You can support hungry children. You can fulfill your life purpose. Make lots of money. It's your birthright. You know, that's how they get to us, to, to focus on the money, focus on their marketing methods, right? Um, yeah, right. And thank you, Isabel, for your comment there, too. Uh, thank you, Linda, for joining as well. And Jadina, uh, Miriam, Caroline, uh, Rachel, Joe, um, Frauke, uh, yeah, thank you all for joining me here. And I hope this has been beneficial. So I hope you will go forward today knowing that what you are given today is the only day you are guaranteed. What you are given now is what your calling is. Your calling is not some now in the future. Your calling is this moment is your calling. How are you in this moment? Let that be what your full presence is now. Blessings.